Hey, welcome back. I've gotten to spend a few months here with this HMC Transient and thought it'd be a fun video to work on. Just so you know the build here, it is a Transient 3.2 version 2 subliner. Uh, uses, um, he used Mike Norris Taipan Damascus and a uh, sulfuric etch, blasted and tumbled titanium handles, 62 Rockwell hardness is pretty impressive. And then uh, you can see he used dark tie on the clip collar backspacer and zirconium on the pivot screws. It's quite a build, quite a build indeed. And it's um, it's got some fancy stuff, but it's pretty subtle. Like you don't like look at this and go, oh man, that thing's totally over the top, like a full Timascus scale. But then that blade comes out and you're like, wow, that Mike Norris knows what he's doing. And Jim knows how to grind a blade. So <clears throat> pretty impressive here. Uh, love the thumb hole on it. Um, there are many bad thumb holes in the world that don't do what they should. Uh, and this one does. So you have access to it and you can really consistently get what you need to get grip, whether it's a thumb flip a reverse flick, which I just uh, shaved a bunch of fingernail into, and it's actually a pretty well um, chamfered hole here, so that's kind of unusual here. I think I just got it caught, kind of, and did that. Zoom in here on the uh, chamfering around the thumb hole, and maybe get it cleaned out a little bit here. Uh, it did come with that cleaning rag and this pretty nice um, um, case, which is really nice because it's like a knife this nice. I don't really want to throw it in my pocket clip, to be honest. I'm going to throw that into something like that um, until I decide if it's a long-term keeper so that I don't damage it if I do carry it. Um, another cool thing about this knife, which you know I noted in the first video, is that it has a very subtle flipper tab to the point where it doesn't bother me because it really just flows with the scale. I don't have to use it, but if I want to, it's there and it works. It also has a really nice combination of rollout and enough detent for a nice finger flick or reverse flick, whatever you want to call it, as well as um, no problem on the thumb flip. I did miss one earlier. It's not the strongest detent ever, but it's pretty damn good. Like that's not going to flip out. It's definitely a strong, distinct break but it's not like an uncomfortable one where you can't get this out, even though this thumb hole is actually pretty close to the pivot. And the further you are from the pivot, the more leverage you have and the easier it is to get out. I don't need to do that in this one. I can just pull it out right here, even though I'm very close to the pivot, which is a little different than some. Like this is a similar distance maybe, but yeah, some of these, uh, if you're up in the top here, you're not gonna be able to open it. For whatever reason, this one you can open really from any part. I guess you can on this guy as well, on the Lamia. But I've just noticed this is a very easy one to roll out. And because it is a subliner with the lock bar below the scale, you don't end up giving yourself lock bar pressure, which would compromise your ability to do things like roll it out if you're pushing right here. So you can get a very natural grip on it. Uh, the black Timascus, uh, very nice on the pivot collars, very subtle. It's nothing crazy. It's got a really nice dark look to it. Love the Zerk hardware, very complimentary to it. And then it's got kind of a fun pocket clip. Like as much as I like these are all dark and this might even, might even be more preferable, it ended up with a kind of fun, more loud pocket clip, which given the rest of the look, I rather enjoy. Now, one of the cool things that I've learned about this and I'll do an upcoming video once it arrives is that these scales are swappable. So the uh, on these subliner versions, you really have like, let me see if I can show it here, um, a scale that's very easy to swap. So you could take basically the uh, um, lock bar, backspacer, pocket clip hardware, and swap out the scales with another scale. So he's gonna send over a uh, carbon fiber scale for me. He does some really nice carbon fiber scale work and I'm gonna move all this stuff over to that. As I was considering my carbon fiber options, I didn't really want one that was loud and marbled because of the way the blade looks. I thought that'd be a little much. So I think he's gonna be sending me a side cut carbon, which I think should be very complimentary to the more, you know, lava lamp um, blade style that we have on here. Um, overall, 
Uh, it's a knife that's grown on me. It was something that I was not 100% sure about when I first got it, to be honest. It wasn't the exact aesthetic that I had normally kind of gravitated to. There were a few things here and there where I was like, that's not really what I go for in terms of like the straight back design here on the blade. Um, but it's really grown on me uh, and become one of my favorite knives in my collection. Um, did pick this up at PNWCI, the Northwest Interna uh, Invitational Knife Show. Um, so it's kind of special to me. It's one of the knives I got from my first knife show. And uh, thus, it's definitely something that I'm thinking I may keep long term, but we'll see. Um, the titanium scales are nice. I'll just, since I'm doing this update video, do another quick weigh in and uh, it's already at 3.2 inches, we know here, but maybe I'll measure overall length as well. So four ounces, just over four ounces flat. So pretty reasonable with the uh, tie scales. You go through the carbon fiber scales on that, and I'm guessing it's going to probably come in around three and a half ounces, maybe even three and a quarter. We'll see how that uh, comes out once I swap it over. Um, but that could be very interesting from a carry perspective. So yeah, overall multiple deployments if you could even yeah you could even thumb sort of it's not quite a front flip but you can kind of thumb flip that out as well which is kind of fun um and an overall very nice knife this was not inexpensive table price on it with this dama blade was 1800 if you get one non dama i think he was charging around 1300 or so 1200 to 1400 range for a non damascus blade Depends on the scale material and stuff that he used, but um, Jim does just really nice work. I think his last name is Vanderbilt, um, and he's a really nice guy. Just a great community member. He does a podcast um, that uh, Alex Steingraber and a few other folks, I think, are involved with, um, but they're very uh, thoughtful and, um, yeah, just a good human and good uh, good knife maker. He also does work for uh, other companies. HMC does work for, um, I want to say, uh, what's the uh, brand? I can picture the knives in my head, but I can't remember it. A few other really nice custom knife brands. We'll just leave it at that. Um, I think he does some for like uh, Brian Brown, if I recall correctly, and uh, maybe Keenan. What's his, uh, what's that company? No, not, not Keenan. I'm forgetting the, the name of the company, unfortunately, but they make the the Alpha Pup and the Pup, but for some reason I can't remember the name. Uh, Keenison, Keenison Knives. Um, so he does some work for them as well, and just a really great machinist. And uh, yeah, cool to have a knife from Jim in the collection. Is it the pinnacle of perfection? I don't think so, but it's a really good knife. And if you like straight back, and you like this sort of handle design, maybe it is for you the perfect knife. Um, objectively, perhaps not, but um, a lot to like about it. Now, one thing that someone might not like varies a little bit on the drop shuttiness. This was the first batch of 3.2 um, subliners he had done, um, but I've noticed some of the newer ones were pretty close to drop shut. Maybe not full gravity, but man, they were smooth compared to this one. This one's very good, but it's not like, like you can hear it a little bit. And now it could be that this has this sort of acid etched blade and with a smoother blade material, it would be like that much more drop shot. I think that that could certainly be part of it. This isn't exactly like a damascus steel blade or a magna cut or a high polished, you know, M390 or something. So maybe with the right, um, you know, blade material, this design ends up uh, being a little more conducive to uh, drop shedding So, you know, if that's number one on your list is that, you know, with gravity, the thing drop shed, it's a pretty light blade with a pretty, pretty aggressive grind on it that goes up pretty high on the blade. So it's just not heavy. And the action is just not that, not that like drop shedding. Now I haven't used it a lot, maybe over time, mine would become more drop shot as the detent ball and the blade wear in and stuff. And I also haven't taken it apart and tried to lubricate it or anything like that. So there are factors that could be playing in there, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say like go get this cause it's 
you know, a drop shut like a Utsler duck or something like that. Now, not all ducks are completely drop shut, I've noticed, but, you know, that's pretty impressive. Now, the problem with the duck is that if I put any lock bar pressure on here, so once I've done this and then I hold it, it's not drop shut anymore. But if I let go, then it's drop shut. So anyways, not to diverge onto other knives, but, um, you know, I think of uh, this design as being a bit synonymous with a, um, with a Holt. You can see some very similar design elements here. I do like the blade shape a little more on the Holt, personally. Um, but this one also has its appeal, and I love the fact that it has a thumb hole. And it really just speaks to like, man, how cool would it be if Holt did that as well? I really wish they would do that. Now, one of the differences here is that you can see how much more exposed this is. So Holt would have to certainly make some changes in order for this to have an effect effective thumb hole. But man, what a cool knife the Holt Morpheus in particular would be with a thumb hole. Um, trying to think of anything else that might compare a little bit. Maybe the brown knives. Um, it's a little bit more of a straight back design. I don't know if it's a, it's a, it is a little bit of a drop point, but um, definitely some similarities there as well. Uh, this guy is a bit more drop shut though. And you know, maybe a hinderer. Um, this one is a three inch, but also a fairly similar handle design and stuff where you get a little bit of the arched back and the belly here. This guy does have like a bit of a second finger troil here and then a, a bit um, better on the choke up point. Um, a little easier for the finger to fit in there. That would be a really nice design adjustment here. would be if this, uh, if this could be a little more welcoming to the finger, you'd have to change this profile and it would change, you know, the look of it a bit. So that would that would definitely be different in order for that to work, but it would be nice if that was like a full finger choil up there so you could really choke up on it. I think that would take this to the next level as well. Um, overall, really enjoying it. Staying in the collection now, going on three months. And uh, yeah, great, great work. Definitely one, uh, one to check out if you're interested in, you know, uh, CNC slash custom knives uh, and you're looking to spend some money that'd be one to uh, consider for the collection. So that's all for now. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.